Hello again, this is Marcus. I review stuff. Today I'm reviewing the song, Did My Best by The Voids. Um, new music from them, uh, which I'm pretty excited for, as a matter of fact. Um, you know, their, their 2018 album, uh, Virtue, is probably one of my favorites um, of the year. So, uh, just coming off of a really solid album, um, really interested to see kind of what they followed up with here so uh not a request or anything just something i picked uh something i noticed came out and i wanted to definitely listen to it uh so that's exactly what i'm gonna do um but if you do want to request a song of course you can just leave me a comment uh and i will be getting to it i have a list going so you know for sure i'll get to it anyway <clears throat> without further ado let's listen to did my best by the voids if I can get my headphones entangled all right here we go very pleasant sound
Okay. Hey, I like that one. Uh, I like that one quite a bit. Um, just in, on my like initial reaction when when the first when the song first started playing with kind of like the upbeat, real positive like uh, instrumentals, I was like, oh wow, is this going to be really different from what the Voids have done previously? No, it's not. <laughs> I will say like instrumentally, it is. Lyrically, it's not. Um, if you go back and listen to like Virtue, pretty much, well, I would say the vast majority of the songs on there are very just like one dark lyrically in in one way or another, and um, they're also like kind of almost grungy, grimy in some aspects, like instrumentally. Um, and this is like it definitely still keeps that same motif from uh, Virtue, but with the the instrumentation the way it is it adds i think another another layer that's the one thing i've been super impressed by with the voids and with julian casablanca's is that um they really just have like a pretty wide uh ranging style um if you go back and listen to virtue songs like um uh pyramid of bones is almost like a hard rock song but then you have songs that fall into more like of an indie pop feel like pink ocean um and then you have like an acoustic like uh yeah yeah so that to me like stylistically the virtue is all over the place but it really works that to me it, feel, it still feels pretty cohesive um and then i feel like did my best you know the song that i just listened to it it's definitely a different style from anything i heard on um on virtue and so i, I just it just really impresses me uh, the versatility, I guess, of this of this band, uh, they're able to provide a lot of different sounds. Um, anyway, let's jump into it. Let's look at the lyrics. Uh, it says, "Let me tell you a story about the hazy good old days." Hazy, not quite able to remember all of it, but they were good old days. Changing the game, rules are for kids. Wanted to play, but now I'm on the sidelines, watching everyone having so much fun. Never let them know you're angrier than them. That's interesting to me. Um, so changing the game, I, I wonder if he's talking about like musically, you know, with his with his previous bands, uh, Julian Casablancas, if I remember correctly, was uh, in the Strokes. Uh, so maybe changing the game, rules are for kids. So he he would already grown up by this point, I guess. Wanted to play, but now I'm on the sidelines watching everyone having so much fun. Not quite sure how that ties into what I'm what I'm thinking, but never let them know you're angrier than them. I think when I was originally listening to this. I sort of had an idea of what I was going to say on that part, but I, I've since forgotten in the last, you know, three uh, three minutes or so. But um, anyway, nobody cares about the days of old. Take a quick picture, then you run home. Call up my friends, no one picks up. I guess I'm going out all alone again. I feel like that first part, what, what really struck me about it was... Um, you know, like your Instagram culture, your Snapchat culture. Um, you know, I've heard stories from, like, firsthand stories of people who have gone to, like, museums, like pop-up museums that were that were put there simply so people could come take Snapchat pictures and Instagram pictures with the artwork. And so to me, that's what that first part is kind of, is like kind of decrying is nobody cares about the days of old. Take a quick picture, then you run home. So, you know... Um, it's all about just that instant like gratification. Then I'm gone. Uh, no one's really stopping and reminiscing about the past or the, you know uh, anything like that. So, call up my friends. No one picks up. I guess I'm going out alone again. It's time to grow up, but I don't want to calm down. Everything happens for a reason somehow. I know that's not true. The meaning is just the same. Common purpose that I love, but might not trust no more. It's interesting. Because he, he, he literally says, everything happens for a reason somehow. And then he just, he straight up says, I know that's not true. The meaning is just the same. And I, want, I wonder what, what he means by that. Uh, the meaning is, is just the same common purpose that I love but might not trust no more. That's interesting. It's very interesting writing. And I'm not entirely sure what he's saying. I would love some insight in the comments if any of you kind of uh, has some insight into that or can interpret it, I think, a little bit better than I can. Oh, mama, how I miss those days. Watch them stream away. I wave, but they don't wave back at me. Kind of like that double entendre. Watch them stream like like a, a 
ocean, river, whatever, has waves. I wave at them, but they don't wave back. Uh, yeah, pretty interesting, I think. I guess they're just afraid that they might get seen, maybe afraid of what they want to be. Some old freak like me, no. So, uh, you know, I think the overall message of this song is just, again, I, I, I do think part of it is like missing the good old days, realizing you're getting older, realizing though that the past is maybe not what you thought it was, I think. I think that's kind of uh, a message here, and you definitely see it towards here towards the end of the song. It all makes sense, prisoners of earth, listen to the stories from before your birth, training for the game, kiss him in the rain, everything about it is so fucking insane. It's been a long time, never lost touch, here comes an old witch with a poison apple. So, all makes sense to me, prisoners of earth, listen to the stories from before your birth. Uh, training for the game, kiss him in the rain. So I think that these, the story, you know, these are stories that were passed down from your dad or your mom or whatever, right? Training for the big game, kissing him in the rain. Uh, it, it's, everything about it is just crazy, right? Um, it's been a long time, never lost touch. Here comes an old witch with a poison apple. Bring it to me, I'll take a bite, every last piece until I lose the light. So he wants to die, I guess? I can only change what I can change. I can only change what I can change. Meet me at the bottom. I can only change what I can change. Meet me at the bottom. The lost years. I never think about those days everyone's talking about. They were the best. I guess you say you like the way I dress, but that gets me beat up. Now, this line I, I found kind of interesting because I, I do I do think part of the song is like, hey, I missed like the good old days, I missed the past, um, but the past has left me, you know. But at the same time, I also think this is um, from what I can tell, especially from this line, I I, I feel like this is a song also about um, how maybe the past wasn't as great as you originally thought it was and i'm starting to kind of realize that maybe that that line about the stream of of the past not waving back to me it's it's that uh the past maybe was not as good as you thought so this line uh they were the best i guess you say you like the way i dress but that gets me beat up that's the thing about the past is that you know the way it's depicted on tv or even in our memory is much more nostalgic uh, versus the reality. Um, you know, in the past, people were often bullied for, for how they dressed, how they looked, who they liked, which, you know, still exists today, don't get me wrong. But I think just overall as a society, we're a little bit more tolerant. Um, you know, as, as a person of color myself, um, you know, I, I look back at at certain TV shows or, or whatever that you know take place in the 50s or the 60s, or, you know, and and uh, and like everything looks so happy, you know, you have your nuclear family, nice house, whatever, right? But then I'm like, you know, someone like me would have been chastised in so many different ways if I had existed in that time period, um, simply for things like the color of my skin, you know. Um, and again, that, not that the, that racism is over, but just like it was much, it felt much more prevalent in the past. Um, and so, like a lot of you know, a lot of people like to reminisce, like, "Oh, I was born in the wrong time period. I, I wish I lived in the '50s or the '60s or whatever." Right? And I'm just like, "No, no, not me." Uh, you know, um, I don't have the same privileges as as someone else might because of again skin color or what have you. Uh, so I, I think that's kind of what he's saying here is that like, yeah, even though I kind of missed the past, I, I realized it wasn't always so great. You get you could get beat up for like what you were wearing, right? Uh, anyway, and now you see that was the story of my youth. I hope it makes sense to you because it doesn't make sense to me. Well, it doesn't make sense to me either, Julian Casablanca. I, I think I need you to explain it to me. So I don't know if, if some of this was maybe a stream of consciousness or if it was like actually he was actually trying to tell a story and then I'm just bad at decoding it. But this last line tells me that maybe I'm thinking too much about it. He's, he's straight up just like, hope it makes sense to you because I have no idea what I'm talking about. This might be one of those times that I'm going a little bit too deep into it when really it's just it's just a stream of words. I don't know. But anyway, lyrically, like I, I liked it. I like that an author, an art, artist, I should say, uh, makes me kind of think about what they're saying. It's not super face value. Uh, at the same time, I do see a little bit of cohesion between the lyrics. So again, I don't think this is just like a, a ramble on type thing. Um, but lyrically, yeah, I, I gave it two thumbs up. I thought it was, I thought it was enjoyable. Uh, uh, you know, poetic enough and interesting enough to kind of keep me going. Um, instrumentally, I will say I really liked. 
I really like the song instrumentally. I liked kind of, uh, you know, when I think of the word like bop, I think like I think of this type of instrumental style because you know that that word was used like in the past with like those really poppy you know uh, soda soda pop songs right this that this to me like instrumentally is a bop not used like in, you know in the 2019 way but used like in the classical um uh, sort of reference but uh, you know it, it started off real cheery and i was like wow this is gonna be real chilly cheery with like the chimes the bells the, the piano in the background you know all that good stuff but you know i, I like that style of like really upbeat instrumentation with you know dark lyrics and vocalization um so like like the instrumentation um when his voice come came in it seemed a little bit off-putting because um you know the the the, the instrumentals were very very poppy very like um upbeat i guess and then he comes in kind of all dark and and twisted a little bit right so but it took me just like a minute a couple seconds to get used to it couple lines right and um once i did I, I thought it contrasted really well with the instrumentation so really liked his voice here really liked the the contrast of the poppy instruments and and the, and the darker lyricism and, and the singing so uh, i you know i gave it two thumbs up for the sound I, I i just really enjoyed um what they did and and even if i like even if you just isolated the instrumentation here i could I'm just here, like, bopping my head and stuff, you know, it was enjoyable, um, and then as far as listenability goes, like I said, I think, um, I, I, you know, I hate to say that people are dumb, but a lot of people don't listen to lyrical content, uh, you know, it's the reason that so many people thought Pumped Up Kicks, uh, many years ago was, like, a positive song, or, you know, like, uh, or, like, this really happy, cheery song, I knew people straight up who, who had no idea, because they don't listen to lyrics, so, um, I could see this becoming pretty popular, like with people who don't really listen to lyrics and are just here for a good time. <laughs> but um, you know, I, I think with the interesting writing, <clears throat> with the poppier vocals, or uh, sorry, poppier poppier instruments, uh, you know, I, I think it's a pretty accessible song. I, yeah, give it a thumb up. You know, um, you know, I, I think some people will enjoy it. Anyway, that's a review. <clears throat> Thank you so much for watching. I hope the Voids come out with some more new music soon because I really enjoy their style, which their style is like over a broad range. Um, as always, if you would like to request a song, please just leave me a comment. Um, and uh, that's about it. If you want to see more from me, uh, Twitter is going to be in the description. You can also click on one of these things here, hopefully, if I remember to put them in. Um, and then if you like the music, go support the artist. Please listen to their music wherever you can. And uh, you want to support me, just do all the stuff that you would normally do. All right. Have a good day. See you.